Hi hey guys, Buildzoid here, and so, you know, I've noticed a few comments on my videos over time, just people saying, like, B450 boards can't do high memory speeds, B450 boards are only QV, like, only do up to, like, 3466, right, like this right here. Ugh. No, why don't you zoom in on the part of the page I want to zoom in on? But anyway, you know, 3466, so... B450 boards are bad for Ryzen 3rd gen because they will bottleneck your memory overclocking performance, and uh, I beg to differ. Um, there. <laughs> so you can see it more clearly. Um, now, admittedly, I didn't actually do stability tests, but any frequency higher than 3800 megahertz on 3rd gen, as far as I'm concerned, is a waste of time. Um... So, yeah, and I know there was a video by Der Bauer recently where he's like, look at this 5 gigahertz micro, uh, Micron Rev, uh, Revision E memory kit. And uh, and fun fact, like the Rev Revision E thing comes from the fact that Micron internally refers to their, like, their different memory chips as revisions, whereas Samsung internally refers to them as dies, right? So, like, if you look at Samsung's uh, doc, like, data sheets, they refer to B-Die as B-Die. And Micron refers to Rev E as Revision E. Um, so, anyway, um, like Samsung doesn't call their B die Revision B, even though it technically is a Revision B, but it's just like they, they don't call it that. So that, that's where, where the distinction comes from. And that way you also don't have to, because Samsung has an E die, which is a four gigabit IC. Um, and it, well, actually, they also have, I think they have an eight gig. D die and a four gig D die, so you kind of have like you'd actually want to specify the density. But anyway, so you know, I tested Micron Rev E, really cheap Micron Rev E. This stuff, this is even cheaper when I than when I was buying it because it was cheap. Like when I was buying it because it was cheap, it was thirty nine quid or like thirty eight quid, and now it's thirty three. So yeah, that that's great right there. Um, the other kits I tested with was this right here, because this is dual rank Sam. Well, this is, uh, yeah, dual rank Samsung, Samsung B die, because it's two by 16 gig sticks. And then this right here, which if you run this on a dual channel board, that's dual rank as well, because it's four by eight. Like if you have 32 gigs of B die on two memory channels, it's dual rank. Um, that, that's the simple version of that. So I tested these two kits because I wanted to see how, you know, they'd interact with a daisy chain motherboard, because um, this is a four layer daisy chain PCB. So this topology should favor two DIMM configurations. And I did test on this motherboard because it's the only B450 motherboard that I have, aside from one two DIMM gigabyte board that I don't think is like particularly interesting to people. Like I like the board. It's kind of cool for APU overclocking. But to most people, that board doesn't really make any sense because it's just like, well, it's only got two DIMMs and it's like, it, it's a bit of a strange board. And I don't think it's available in the US and that kind of thing. So yeah, um, anyway, so I tested on this. And the, the, these three are the memory kits I tested with. Thank you, Corsair, for sending these to me. Thank you, Patreon, for funding the purchase of all of these. Because um, I did buy four, four sticks like this. Um, and uh, yeah, so, you know, the Rev E goes all the way up to 4400. Um, the main issue with Revision E is that it doesn't tighten very much. So your performance basically from auto, go, like on b -Dye, I go from auto to manual. And, you know, there's there's a pretty decent improvement in terms of performance right? We pick up like a gig uh, worth of bandwidth, which actually like this is dual rank. So dual rank is kind of OP on auto timings already because it's like the main benefit to dual rank is that the memory access is interleaved. So you don't have as much like the timings don't have quite so much impact. Um, the downside is dual rank is harder to clock. So you lose some clock speed to going dual rank. Um, anyway, uh, so yeah, Rev E, you know, goes all the way up to 4400. Uh, the performance is, as expected, god awful. I didn't do any stability testing because this was just a quick test to like see if if the board can even do that. For comparison's sake, I've had this memory kit all the way up to like 4666 and 4733, or at least some of the sticks. Because actually, like I'm there, there's like two sticks that don't go to 4733, and there's two sticks that do 4733 out of the four I bought. Um, and yeah, so they go up to 4733 some, on some other boards, and it's like high-index 570 boards, I can go up to 4733. Um, so that's kind of the difference you would see between like, well, a cheap B450 board and then like an ultra high-index 570. It's like, you know, it's 333 megahertz in the frequency range that nobody should be using because it's just not practical. 
because um, you de desync your infinity fabric. And also the, the thing is, is like if you could run high frequency B die, things wouldn't be so bad, but B die is harder on the memory controller than Rev E. So you can't run high frequency B die. Like on this board, right? The, the difference, so Rev E on this board does 4400 B die in the same two by eight configuration on this board does 4266. Right, like that's, and, and it doesn't matter. Like I, I could loosen out the timings even more. It doesn't, doesn't make a difference. It's just not possible to run high frequency on B die because it's very difficult uh, compared to running Rev E. This is like the IC is just really easy for the memory controller to deal with. Um, that's like the the simplified version of that. So the downside is my revision E doesn't do tight, tight like doesn't do tight sub timings or tight primaries for that matter. Like. You know, like, yeah, at 3800, I need 16, 20, 20, because 16, 19, 19 literally doesn't, like, it's not stable enough to finish Ida. Um, so that's kind of the thing. Um, also, Daisy Chain doesn't like four dims. So going from a two dim configuration on Rev E to four dims on Rev E, um, we're looking at a 600 megahertz clock speed drop, which is like, okay, that's no big, that's not really a surprise. Um, if you go from two by 16, uh, for B-Die versus 4 by 8 uh, on B-Die, you lose about 133 megahertz because, again, four dims is hard to run. Like, well, it's, uh, well, it, you know, it's lower frequency than Rev E because it's harder to drive. And it's lower frequency than, uh, you know, two 16 gig sticks because this is a daisy chain motherboard, which basically means that the trace length from, uh, for each of the different, uh, each of the dim slots is different. Um, on the same memory channel. So there's like timing differences between, uh, you know, the, the dim nearest to the CPU and the dim second nearest to the CPU and the dim, like there's basically, and because of that, it makes it harder for the memory controller to deal with it. So you end up with uh, like, you lose frequency on this kind of memory configuration trying to run four dims. Um, so that's kind of why like, so basically if you wanted to max out your memory performance on a B450 MSI motherboard because they're all daisy chain. And I think Asus is the same thing where their B450s are all daisy chain. Uh, Gigabyte should be all T topology for their four dimmers. And uh, ASRock, I have no idea. Um, but yeah, so if you wanted to basically max out memory performance with your like 3700X or 3600 on, uh, you know, um, B450 motherboards, you should be looking at like two by, like two by 16 kit, like, well, two by eight, two by 16, not two by 32 gigs because 32 gig sticks suck. And actually 64 gigs in general, just currently is a awkward, like it's so much RAM that you can't do high speed on it. Cause the ICs that are like, cause if you try to run like say four by 16, that's quad rank, the memory controller doesn't like that. If you try to run uh, two by 32, the memory controller would be technically fine with that, but the ICs are terrible, so you can't do high frequency anyway. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of the kind of the the situation with the memory support is like, you know, you're basically for peak performance, you want to be looking at like 32 gigs because you get the benefits of dual rank. You don't really lose any frequency because there's just not like. Yeah, two by eight can do 4,400, but because you're out of sync with your FCL, like you're desynced to the FCLK, you gain a bunch of latency, you lose a bunch of performance, it's, it's a waste of time and effort. Um, so yeah, it's just like, you know, again, two by 16, like if you're buying MSI B450 boards and you want a lot of RAM and you want the RAM to be fast, two by 16, and you can actually get some pretty cheap uh, two by 16 B-die kits. Like there's a 3200 CL14 from, from G-Skill, which is going for like $240-ish. Um, so yeah, you, you can get that. And it's just like, bam, there, there's your there's your like high performance option. If you want a cheap option, then you can go for two by 16 of revision E, which uh, you know goes for extremely cheap. Um, you could also just run four by eight of revision E because again, like it's so light on the memory controller, it doesn't really lose any frequency. And most like the timings are still gonna suck, <laughs> right? That's that's an IC thing. Um, timing generally, like there are some like some situations where the motherboard will affect timing, but generally speaking, the main thing the motherboard has the most impact on is the frequency. Like that's the thing where you notice big differences in motherboards. And sometimes there are motherboards where you just have like timing anomalies, which are normally like BIOS issues, um, which still counts. 
right? Like th th that still counts, but it's just like the, they're not really as like high performance impact as uh, as some of the like. Like I have one motherboard where you for no like for no reason whatsoever you just need really high TCWL if you're running high frequencies, which is like well that's strange, um, but o overall it doesn't like it doesn't really matter that much. Um, so yeah, that board has some weird timing issues, but it's just like eh, for day to day usage doesn't really affect you, and and the frequency is still fine. So yeah, you could run like four by eight revision E, two by sixteen revision E, two by sixteen B die, four by eight B die. I really would like I wouldn't recommend because you're probably going to bounce like th this is motherboard limited not so much the cpu limited a lot of cpus won't don't do 1900 fclk fully stable mine doesn't mine literally just does it long enough for to finish benchmarks so well no it's like i can do benchmarks a lot of benchmarks at 1900 but i can't do like stability tests so that's kind of the thing um so yeah but the main point here was just like can you do high frequency and the answer is yes um, and VDI, you know, two by eight, you get a little bit like you still get high frequency, but it's not as high. So basically the the, the clock speed limits are, um, you know, if you're going to be running four dims on an MSI daisy chain, you're probably never going to see more than 3800. Admittedly, this is like really low effort overclocking on my part um, because I just wanted to see like, hey, can these boards even do high frequencies? And it's just like, well, yes, yes, they can. Not super high frequencies, like some of the X570s can go all the way up to like 4733, 4800, 40, like 5 gigahertz even if you have good enough memory sticks, which I don't because I'm buying 33 quid, you know, <laughs> basically the cheapest Rev E that, that you can get. Um, um, but uh, yeah, it's just like, you know, uh, yeah, you, you can get good, like you can still do well over 4000. So that that's good enough for me. And yeah, so basically it's kind of that. For 32 gigs, you're going to be looking at around 3,800 as a limit. And for 16 gigs, about 4,400. So not that 4,400 is a speed I would actually run because again, you end up with your desynced FCLK and you're just screwed. So then um, the other thing worth noting is, so, you know, that's like the practical result. So yes, it is possible to do high frequency. Um, in terms of the actual motherboard motherboards, the, the funny thing is this is really just MSI forgot to update the sort of marketing materials on this page, more so than this motherboard doesn't support high frequency. Because if you go into the support page and then go to compatibility and then go memory, that's the wrong CPUs. These, then you go by RAM speed, damn it, go. There, 4,200. Funnily enough, that's on, on BDI, and yeah, that's about the same limit I ran into, right? So, um, and that's for, for two DIMMs. Though that's a 64 gig kit they got that out of. Motherboard vendor QVLs are always very, like, they're, they're very strange a lot of the time. <laughs> but okay, they have like 16 gig, and even, how did they get a 32 gig kit to do 4130? Oh no, that's just with two dims again. Okay, so that's gonna be a I, that's gonna be a four by eight kit because I don't think crucial. I don't believe G Skill does a forty one thirty three two by sixteen. Um, yeah, but you like so and and it says, yeah, because it says so. Uh, yeah, so basically MSI is like the, the, the this this is their rank indicator. So this is like single rank, single rank, single rank. I they really shouldn't call it side because there's technically ICs out there which inter have two IC like two ranks in one memory chip. Um, so if you put a full set of memory chips onto a stick, you'll have one side of the stick populated, but two ranks worth of memory. And they are very rare and like strange, and you don't normally come across sticks like that, but they exist. So going single-sided versus double-sided not really a great you know uh indicator in my opinion but anyway yeah and they have dual validate you know dual rank uh du well double like yeah dual rank sticks they have validated all the way up to 3600 right and then four dim configurations they have validated up to 3600 so yeah i'm doing about 200 megahertz more than they have in their qvl which is about what we'd expect because i'm not bothering to test for stability whereas i hope the board vendor actually does right like i'm really not a fan of board vendors where their qvl goes up to things that a aren't on xmp because it's just like well the end user is literally not going to be able to buy a kit that does that out of the box anyway and b for me uh, like things in the QVL where it's like that th we did this in our lab once and uh yeah if, if you're not like 
really good at overclocking, you're probably never going to see the speeds, spe see speeds like that yourself. So I'm not a fan of, of vendors that do that. So the fact that I can just like straight up boot, like, you know, low effort boot 4,400 and the QVL says 4,200, that's, that's good. That, that right there is confidence in the motherboard <laughs> for me. Um, anyway, B450 Tomahawk Max. So this board, the funny thing is, is like I'm 99% certain all of the Max boards use the same quad, uh, like four layer daisy chain topology that all of the B4, like all of the non-Max boards use. So the memory overclocking should be exactly the same. It's just that MSI for these actually has the updated marketing materials. So these are like 4133, whereas this one, of course, only says 3466. Even if you go into the QVL, that QVL actually looks, um, right, this QVL, if you compare it against the one for this one, compatibility, there it is, is, um, and we go by, nope, 4200, like, it's the same damn QVL. See? Yeah, like, literally, there's no difference. Right, you can see that I'm, I'm going through the tabs, but the only thing that's changing is, is the motherboard name up here. So <laughs> that's kind of the thing is it's just like, yeah, they're, they're exact. like I'm 99% certain the memory topology is the same. Uh, the same is true of this board, right? Which is probably like, this is basically the best B450 motherboard you can buy. Uh, and this again is only spec'd up to 3466. But if we go into the QVL, cause this uses the same layout as all the other ones, I'd assume. Um, go by supported speed. Right, and we go down here. Why right, this one's out of alignment. Same damn thing, <laughs> right? Because it's the same layout. So the thing is, with Ryzen 3rd Gen, what led to the big increase in memory overclocking is the new memory controller, not some crazy redesign of the motherboards. Though the X570 motherboards do actually like this. They do higher peak frequencies. Um, but for practical day-to-day -day overclocking, and this is not not a difference that's worth, worth uh, paying. Like, it's not a difference you'll actually take advantage of. But yes, there is a benefit, like you know, the crazy eight layer daisy chains that you get on the top end ATX boards. Um, some of the X5, like I'd assume like the mini DTX from Asus and the Gigabyte ITX on X570, those also do some crazy high memory speeds. So that you wouldn't see on like a B450 motherboard like this, but it's just like, you know, those boards are two to eight times the cost of the B450 boards. So, you know, that's kind of like, yeah, you, you, you know, that, that's where you see the difference. And it's just like, that's not really a, like, that's not a good reason, in my opinion, to go buy an X570 motherboard. I wouldn't buy an X570 motherboard for memory support because you can get like, you know, again, most CPUs won't even do 1900 FCLK. So you don't need a motherboard that does more than like, uh, like if the motherboard does up to 4000, it's good enough, right? Like, because the board's not going to limit you on, on daily overclocks. Um, sure, you won't be breaking world records for memory frequency with it, but you're not going to be like you're not going to be losing performance for like day day to day usage because you wouldn't be running that kind of frequency anyway, right? So that that's the thing. Um, yeah. Uh, so B four fifties do high frequency. Um, what else did I want to take a look at? Oh yeah, there's this board which actually does use a different topology. Also, you know, 3466 according to MSI. This one doesn't have as complete a QVL, but it's still not bad enough that I'd be like, eh, I wouldn't buy this. Um, like because basically this one tops out at uh, 3866. So, and I think like the funny thing is, is like on third on second gen Ryzen, this was actually doing like 3600 plus for aggressive overclock so i'd be very surprised well i'd be uh like i'd honestly assume that this board can do more than where the qvl stops i think msi just was like well this is a low-end motherboard it's basically the cheapest b450 motherboard with a heatsink with like a vrm heatsink that they make um I think they just went like, we can't like, what's the, like, there's no point, you know, validating this board up to like 4,400 megahertz. <laughs> like nobody with a board like this, why, why would anybody care about that? Right. So yeah, B450 boards do, do high frequencies depending on what vendor you're looking at. Right. So gigabyte for their B450s, those are all T topology. So those would actually have a better, better results with like, we're well, not necessarily better because I actually tested an X370 T topology board. And if I remember correctly, it did 3800 on two by 16 and it did 3800 on four by eight. So I think just the memory controller is so strong that it can just 
roll through the fact that T topology is not ideal for two by 16 configurations, whereas it is ideal for four by eight. Um, but the memory controller seemed to just sort of plow through that. So good job, Ryzen third gen memory controller. Um, but uh, yeah, so for like, you know, so on gigabyte boards, you might not have like four by, my, four by eight, I'd expect on gigabyte boards to work up to 3,800 instead of just 3,666. But uh, again, like, I'm not sure if Gigabyte updated their QVLs because ultimately I only tested the MSI board. I don't have any Gigabyte B450 motherboards, so I'm not going to be testing those. I also don't have any Asus B450 motherboards, so I'm not going to be testing those either. I also have no interest in acquiring any of those because I have way too much stuff to do. And yeah, it's just like I have way too much, like way too much stuff. I, there's too many motherboards, too many hard, <laughs> there's too much hardware in this world. I can't cover all of it. It's actually like one thing that's been really annoying me recently is just like, I feel like, like, I feel like I'm jumping motherboard to motherboard and platform to platform so frequently these days that I don't know. Like, basically, there used to be a time when I could spend several months with like one CPU and one motherboard. And now it's like I get hours like you can measure the amount of time i spent on certain platforms in hours and it sucks because it's just like i don't don't have as much like i can't test as many silly things like basically on some platforms it was a case for me where i would know exactly what would and wouldn't work on the basis that i already did everything like i basically tried every possible combination of settings at some point and it's just like yeah so i know this like the back of my own hand but with a lot of platforms these days, it's just like, yeah, I just don't have enough time. So anyway, but here's just kind of like proof that B450 boards can do high frequency. Even MSI claims that they can do high frequency. And my testing shows that, you know, their claims don't seem to be outrageous considering I can go up to 4400 and 4266. Um, yeah, so that's it for the video. You know, B450 motherboards can do high memory speeds. There. All... all and all of the, the, hopefully this stops all the comments about how they can't because the vendors can't be bothered to update their marketing materials to, you know, include the new memory support. Because I think what they would have to do is, pro well, no, they, they could just smash 4,000 on there and then people with second gen who are like, my CPU doesn't do 4,000 ones is like, term, like, you need to read the fine print or something. But anyway... So yeah, I guess that's the end of the video. So time for the outro. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. And if you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I do have a Patreon, uh, which you can find a link to down in the description below that supports me directly. It pays for things like RAM and certain motherboards like this one, actually. I did buy this one. So yeah, <laughs> it's like, that's a, that's a Patreon purchase. Um, and... Uh, yeah, other, and if you don't want to use Patreon and you want to like buy some AHOC merch, then there's uh, the AHOC Teespring store where we have shirts, there's stickers, there's posters, there's hoodies, there's socks. Um, and those also fund things like motherboards and uh, very cheap memory kits. Maybe some more expensive memory kits sometime as well, but mostly just really cheap stuff because I like spending money on really high-end hardware. <laughs> um, a lot of the time, the differences are quite marginal. Um, anyway, so yeah, but there's link to both links to both Teespring and Patreon down in the description below. They help out with running the channel immensely. That's it for the video. So thanks for watching and goodbye.